All right, everyone, buckle up. Because we are diving headfirst into this crazy world series. Yeah, this one is... Dodgers and Yankees. Something else. Always a big matchup. But yeah. this year, this year it's unbelievable. We are potentially looking at a sweep. I know. Dodgers, one game away from doing what's never been done in World Series history. It's pretty wild when you really think about it. You know, no team's ever come back from 3 nothing down to win the World Series. Ever. The only time we've even seen a comeback like that from down three. Oh, and any MLB seven-game playoff series was, well, it was the 4 Red Sox. Right, which, you know, Red Sox fans love to bring up. But oh, yeah, of course. Not so much for Yankee fans. Probably not a good memory for them. No, no not at all. So, okay, let's rewind a little. Let's talk game three. Okay. Because even though it felt like the Dodgers were in control the whole time, there were some really intense moments in that game. There were some edge-of-your-seat moments, for sure. I mean, right out of the gate. Yeah. You could just tell the Dodgers were, they were in it to win it. Freddie Freeman, I mean, this guy is on fire right now. His two-run homer in the first inning just mm -hmm. set the tone perfectly. It did. And then Walker Bueller. Oh, man. Five scoreless innings coming off a season that, you know, let's be honest, wasn't exactly his best. Yeah, there were definitely some question marks coming into this postseason, especially after, yeah. you know, he had his second Tommy John surgery, which is a big deal for a pitcher. It's huge. For anyone who's not familiar, that's major elbow surgery. Right. And, you know, there were definitely some doubts about if he could even come back from that, let alone pitch at this level. And to come back at this level after an ERA over five this season, which is or him. almost unheard of for a pitcher like him. So, I mean, how... How did he turn it around like that? It really is incredible. He had to reinvent himself as a pitcher, basically. Mm. Before the surgery, he was known for that blazing fastball, like just blowing it past hitters. Yeah, pure power. Exactly. But now he's mixing things up, relying more on off-speed pitches, and, and keeping those hitters guessing. You saw it in Game 3. That slider was working beautifully. And his curveball, I mean, it was just dropping off the table. So he's he's not just overpowering hitters anymore. He's outsmarting them. Exactly. He's got the finesse now to go with the power. Which, it's got to be frustrating if you're a batter. Yeah, and Bueller's even said himself that the, uh, you know, that pressure of playoff baseball, that adrenaline, it actually helps him lock in and perform at his best. Makes sense. Yeah. You know. You rise to the occasion. Yeah, you gotta love that playoff intensity. Okay, speaking of intense moments, can we talk about that call at home plate with Giancarlo Stanton? Oh, man, I was on the edge of my seat for that one. I was holding my breath. It was bang, bang, play. Yeah, I mean, Volpe with the single, Stanton running from first and, and third base coach Luis Rojas, sending him home. Aggressive send. A Aggressive and risky, right? I mean, very risky. Stanton, he's not exactly known for his speed. Oh. And then you've got Teoscar Hernandez out in left field, and that guy has a cannon for an arm. You know, there's a lot that goes into a coach's decision to send a runner home in that situation. Yeah. Looking at the score, the outs, speed of the runner, how strong the outfielder's arm is. And in this case, I think the Yankees, being down 3 0 in the series, they might have felt like they had no choice but to gamble. Had to go for it. They had to, but it didn't pay off. It did not. You could just see the frustration on Stanton's face when he got tagged out. Oh, yeah. And even Boone, you know, admitted after the game that, yeah, it was a risky call. Yeah. But Stanton himself said that the team just wasn't wasn't taking advantage of opportunities, you know. And I think that's a, that's a really important point here. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. If you don't execute when it matters most, it's tough to win games, especially at this level. All right, so before we get into what all this means for the rest of the series, can we just take a second to appreciate Freddie Freeman's home run streak? It's unbelievable. Five games in a row with a home run. He tied the World Series record. And to think that it actually started back in 2021 when he was at the Braves? That's wild. It's like he's carrying that momentum across two seasons and into the World Series. It's incredible. You can't help but wonder, like, is this guy ever going to stop hitting home runs? Hmm. But the bigger question is, can the Yankees overcome this historic deficit. Well. They're facing a rookie pitcher in game four, Lewis Gill, and it's looking like the Dodgers might go with a bullpen game. Right. Which means, you know, using multiple relievers instead of a single starter. Right. Do they even have a chance? I mean, let's be real. The odds are really stacked against them. No team has ever come back from 3-0 down in the World Series. And their bullpen, I mean, they've been working overtime in these first three games. Those arms have got to be getting tired. Oh, yeah. And then there's Aaron Judge. What's going on with him? Yeah. Practically invisible at the plate this whole series. You know, it's hard to say for sure. The Dodgers pitching staff has been lights out. 
Yeah. Maybe they've just figured out how to pitch to him. Or, you know, maybe he's putting too much pressure on himself trying to do too much. Yeah, he is the face of the franchise. He is. And when your star player isn't performing, it can affect the whole team. Absolutely. So, okay, we've got this potential sweep on one hand, a historic comeback on the other. Where do we go from here? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. You know, Bueller's story coming back from injury like that, it's amazing, but it's only part of it. We need to look at the bigger picture, how dominant the Dodgers have been, the struggles the Yankees are facing, and what it all means for their legacies. It's bigger than just one game. Yeah, this it's about legacies now. It's about legacies now. Exactly. All right, we'll be back in just a minute to uh, to break down the rest of this story. Sounds good. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I mean, the Dodgers, they've just been playing like a, like a well-oiled machine. They have. They've got everything clicking, the pitching, defense, timely hitting. Like they're reading straight out of the postseason playbook. I know. It's like they're doing everything right. They really are. And that play in the fourth inning, like Teoscar Hernandez throwing Stanton out at home plate. Oh, yeah. That was that was textbook. Textbook defense. Right there. He had all the time in the world to set up for that throw. Perfect strike. Right on the money. Just, just shut down the Yankees' momentum. Oh, completely. They were starting to rally a little bit there, yeah. and then boom, innings over. And those those momentum shifts, those are so important in a series like this. Huge. And it feels like the Dodgers have, they've just been on the right side of yeah. every single one so far. They have. And you know, it goes back to what we were talking about before. The Yankees are just not capitalizing on those opportunities. Yeah. The Dodgers are doing the opposite. They are. They're making the most of every chance they get. They're seizing every opportunity. And it's like they're playing with this this quiet confidence, you know? Like, they've been here before. Yeah, they've got that swagger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they know how to win. They know how to win. Okay, but let's let's circle back to Walker Bueller for a minute. Mm. I mean, his Game 3 performance was... Phenomenal. Amazing, especially considering what he's been through, you yeah. know, this year, after two Tommy John surgeries. You know, most pitchers would be would be happy just to be back on the mound at all. Yeah. Let alone pitching at this level. It's just a, it's a testament to to how hard he works, how resilient he is. And to do it all while knowing that he's a free agent after the season. No, oh, talk about pressure. Right. He's basically auditioning for his future, not just with the Dodgers, but yeah. for, you know, potentially every other team in the league. That's a lot to have on your shoulders. That's huge. Okay, let's uh let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the Yankees. I mean, they're facing a, an almost impossible task here. Yeah. No team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in the World Series. Yeah. How how do they even, I mean, how do you even approach that? Well, I think the first thing they got to do is just focus on winning game four. One game at a time, try to build some momentum, chip away at that deficit, but they also got to figure out their bullpen situation. Right. Thanks. They've been, I mean, they've been leaning on those relievers pretty heavily. They have. And that, that can really take a toll, especially this late in the season. Those arms are probably getting tired. They got to be. And then, you know, there's the Aaron Judge factor. What is going on with him? I mean, he's been he's been non-existent at the plate. It's it's hard to say for sure. Maybe the Dodgers have just figured him out. Yeah. Maybe they've cracked the code on how to pitch to him. Or maybe, you know, maybe he's just he's pressing. He's trying to do too much. He's got a lot of pressure on him. That's for sure. He does. I mean, he's the heart of that team. He is. He's the guy they look to for those big hits. Yeah. And when your star player isn't producing, it can it can really have a ripple effect throughout the whole lineup. So, OK, real talk. Do you do you think the Yankees have any chance of actually pulling off this miracle comeback? I mean, you look at the history, the odds are are definitely not in their favor. You got a dominant Dodgers team, their bullpen is depleted, their star Yikes. player is struggling. Yeah. But, and this is a big but, baseball's a crazy game. I mean, we've seen some pretty wild things happen. We have. Remember remember the 04 ALCS? Oh, don't remind Yankee fans. The Red Sox were down 3-0-2, guess who? The Yankees. Yeah. And they came back and won the series, and then they went on to win the World Series. I bet Yankee fans don't like to hear that story. Probably not, but the point is, as long as there's another game to play, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Even if it's just a sliver of hope. Right, right. So, I mean, we've got we've got this clash of narratives here, you know? Yep. We've got the Dodgers, this powerhouse team. Yeah. They're on the verge of making history. Yeah. And then you got the Yankees facing these insurmountable odds, but still holding on to that that little bit of hope. And that's what makes this series so compelling, right? It's okay. not just about the wins and losses. It's about the stories, the individual journeys, the legacies at stake. 
And speaking of legacies, if the Dodgers do complete this sweep, where do they rank among baseball's all-time great dynasties? I mean, where do they fit in? I mean, we're talking about a team that could potentially sweep the Yankees in the World Series. I know. It's It's a legacy-defining moment. That's for sure. For sure. I mean, to put it in perspective, the Dodgers have been a dominant force for for like the past decade, you know, multiple division titles, World Series appearances. They even won it all back in 2020. And they built this powerhouse, this, I mean, it's a dynasty through through smart drafting, you know, and then key acquisitions along the way. Exactly. I mean, their farm system has produced some incredible talent, you know, guys like Bueller and Kershaw, Seager. And their own talent. Yep. And then they go out and they get, you know, superstars like Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts through free agency. I mean, it's it's a recipe for success. It is. <laughs> it really is. So, OK, let me ask you this. If they do sweep the Yankees, are we talking about a dynasty on par with like those Giants teams, those Red Sox teams that won multiple championships? I think it's a really strong argument. They've got the consistency, the star power, the winning culture, you know. And a sweep like this would just just cement their place as one of the the elite teams of this era. It really would. And what's crazy is that even with all this success, it doesn't feel like they're slowing down at all. No, it feels like they're It feels like they're just getting started. They're just getting started. It's scary. I know it's kind of scary. Okay, so I want to bring this back to you the listener. Hmm. What has stood out to you the most in this World Series? Is it the historical significance of of this potential sweep? Is it the Dodgers just pure dominance? Is it Bueller's comeback story? What got you hooked? Let us know. Yeah, think about those individual performances that have really shaped this series so far. Yeah. You got Freeman just hitting bombs left and right. You got Bueller shutting down the Yankees. You got the Dodgers defense. I mean, they're catching everything. These individual stories, they're all part of this this bigger narrative, you know, of a team on the verge of achieving something truly special. Yeah, and as we head into game four, the big question remains, can the Yankees find a way to, to stop this freight train? I mean, can they pull off the impossible? Can they claw their way back into this series? Or will the Dodgers just continue their march toward a historic championship? Here's something to think about as you watch this all unfold. You know, even if it feels like the outcome is already decided, baseball has a way of surprising us. It does. It's a game of of inches of unpredictable bounces, of moments that can completely change everything in a heartbeat. Yeah, you never know. You know it's going to happen. A bloop single, a wild pitch, a defensive miscue, any of those things can change the course of history. Yeah, so while while the Dodgers might have one hand on the trophy, right. the Yankees Whoops, they're still in it. They're still in this fight. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes baseball so great, right? Exactly. You just never know what's going to happen until that final out is recorded. That's it for our deep dive. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See you, Tom.